Chris with RC Worst here. Today we're going to take a look at the vent hole that many manufacturers and industry professionals agree is a very important step in the installation of sump sewage and effluent pumps. So what purpose does the vent hole serve? Well, drilling a vent hole above the impeller will prevent airlock. Uh, this is commonly referred to as an anti-airlock hole and today many many pumps on the market feature an anti-airlock hole. Um, and it's typically located on the volute of the pump. Though, not every pump on the market offers this feature. Um, so, I mean, you definitely a bonus, but not, not a requirement. And I've got a pump right here that I wanted to show you that features this vent hole. This is a Hydromatic VS50A1 sump pump. And uh, right down here next to my finger, you can see we've got a small vent hole. And um, what that does is, is as the liquid level drops when the pump is pumping, if uh, a little bit of air manages to slip past and get into the volute, it can become easily entrapped, uh, similar to holding a cup upside down in a sink full of water and pushing it down. Um, so to prevent that, the air bubbles can escape through this vent hole and um, then the pump is able to pump liquid freely and, and uh, it won't get air locked. So, when you, uh, when you run into a situation where you've got a sump pump that doesn't have the built-in vent, you're of course going to need to drill your own. And uh, that's very simple. And when you drill your own vent hole, I typically recommend drilling the hole in the discharge pipe about uh, three to four inches above the pump discharge connection. Um, I'll typically use a 3 16 inch drill bit. And, uh, and that's because I like to keep the hole small, uh, and not very, not very large to where it's going to impact the overall flow of the pump, but not so small that it becomes easily plugged. So I found that, that particular size of 3 16 is a good balance. Um, this little hole can cause some spray, so be cautious when drilling the hole uh, to keep it relatively low based on the design of your system. Um, I typically will drill the hole in, um, in, in such a fashion that the, the hole is either perfectly straight with the discharge pipe or perhaps even um, slightly downwards, but you'll have to, of course, remove the pipe before you do that because then the spray is going to come down in this direction. So um, any one of those solutions is fine. You just want to avoid drilling in this position because then it's going to spray up and out of the tank, potentially causing water damage and, and so forth. So um, it is possible, of course, for a pump to draw air um, even though uh, even though the water level hasn't actually dropped to a point where it seems like it would be able to draw air. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't really need a, uh, a vent hole on my system because my, uh, my sump has 8 inches of water above it at all times or, or the, the water level never gets below the top of my pump. But a thing to keep in mind, um, vortexing can occur inside of a tank. And uh, vortexing is basically the, the small twister-like vortex that we've all seen in the bathtub or the sink as it drains. And what that does is it allows air to travel right down the middle of the vortex and uh, into the drain or the sink or into the pump in this case. So uh, the more flow that a pump's able to generate, the stronger a vortex it's able to create. So um, the deeper the, the air is able to penetrate through whatever the liquid is. So keep that in mind if you've got a pump that that uh, produces a high amount of volume, you're going to want to have uh, more head uh, of water above it in order to prevent that vortexing. So, um, of course, you're going to have to look at every application. It's a little bit different and uh, try to do the best that you can with the balance there. Now, the vent hole, of course, does protect your pump from becoming airlocked and thus not pumping, but it is good to be aware that occasionally the vent hole can become plugged and this is typically diagnosable uh, by the pump running but the liquid level not actually falling. The best solution uh, to avoid airlock is to keep the liquid level high enough in the basin, as I mentioned, that the uh, pump does not allow air to enter, but uh, of course as we know that is possible even if, uh, even if the liquid level is above the pump. So keep that in mind. Uh, if a pump does become airlocked and it continues to run, uh, it's, it's not good for the pump. It's, it's going to eat into the life dramatically. Not many pumps on the market are capable of and or are recommended for use in 
uh, long running periods. So you want to ensure that you've got relatively short cycles, you're moving water, and the, the system's operating as it should. Permanent damage can easily occur if a motor becomes too hot and that typically is associated with prolonged run times or rapid cycling. Um, an inexpensive way to protect your system from an airlocked pump above and beyond the simple vent hole would be to utilize an alarm system. If installed properly, an alarm system will notify you if the pump becomes airlocked and uh, the liquid level rises too high. So, in, the, in this example, uh, we can imagine that, that my hand would be the alarm and um, if the, the vent hole became plugged in this particular case, the water level would continue to rise, even though the pump may be on in this example. However, once the water reaches this level, it's gonna alarm me. I'll be able to quickly diagnose that the pump is running. However, no liquid is moving, thus you know, determining it's an airflow, resolving the issue by either unplugging it or, or resetting it in the tank, and, um, and we're up and running again without any problems. So, um, that pretty much does it for the vent hole and, uh, and why it's so important. It's, it's a very simple and inexpensive solution uh, to a lot of headache down the road. So I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions on what we covered, leave those in the comments below. We'll be sure to check those out and get back to you. Um, you could potentially provide us some, uh, a good question for our next video, so that would be excellent. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Have a great day.